In this example, we're given the factored form of a polynomial function and asked to find the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, which could also be referred to as the real zeros or real roots of the polynomial function, and then also asked to describe the end behavior of the polynomial function. We should recognize the given polynomial function as a degree two polynomial function, and therefore we can also call this a quadratic function. If it's helpful, we can replace f of x with y and write this as y equals the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus four. And now to find the intercepts of any function, the process is the same. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to zero and solve for y. And to find the x-intercept, so the real zeros, we set y equal to zero and solve for x. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. So again, to find the y-intercept, we'll set x equal to zero and solve for y. And let's go ahead and use this form of the equation. So we would have y equals the quantity zero plus two times the quantity zero minus four. That would give us y equals positive two times negative four, which is equal to negative eight. So the y-intercept, equals negative eight. And now to find the x-intercepts, we'll set y equal to zero and solve for x. So that'd give us the equation zero equals the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus four. Well this product here on the right would be equal to zero when x plus two equals zero or when x minus four equals zero. Solving for x here, we would subtract two on both sides, so x equals negative two. Adding four on both sides, we'd have x equals positive four. So the x-intercepts equal negative two and positive four. So going back to the previous slide, the y-intercept is negative eight. We could give this as an ordered pair, where the x-coordinate would be zero and the y-coordinate is negative eight and we had two x-intercepts. We had x equals negative two and x equals positive four. As ordered pairs, this would be the two points negative two, zero, and the point four, comma, zero. And now to describe the end behavior, we want to describe the value of the function, or the y value, as x approaches the left, or negative infinity, and as x approaches right, or positive infinity. To verify the end behavior, we will look at the graph of the function in just a moment, but we should also recognize that the leading term of this polynomial function would be x squared. So if we have a function in the form of f of x equals x squared and then plus or minus other terms, we should be able to describe the end behavior just by using the first term of the polynomial function. We should recognize a polynomial function with a leading term of one x squared would be a parabola that opens upward like this. And therefore, as x approaches to the right or positive infinity, notice how the y values approach positive infinity to the right and to the left. But again, to verify this, let's go ahead and graph the given function. Let's go ahead and press y equals clear out any old functions, and type in our new function. So we have the quantity x plus two times the quantity x minus four. And we'll go ahead and press zoom six for the standard window. And now, as x approaches positive infinity, we'd be moving right along the graph. Notice as we move right approaching positive infinity, the function values increase without bound or go upward, and therefore the function values or the y values approach positive infinity, and the same is true as we approach the left, or as x approaches negative infinity. As we move to the left, we can see the function moving upward without bound, 
and therefore the y values or function values are approaching positive infinity. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity or positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x or y also approaches positive infinity. Hope you found this explanation helpful.